we are excited that every month we're able to bring you um, all kinds of talks. It can be from, of course, birds to native plants, to people who actually take trips um, all over the world. So uh, welcome everybody. Um, September's program, we're excited to bring you the birds and wildflowers of deep meadows. And Joyce Bond and Lorraine Smith actually have put this PowerPoint together because their big part of the Chico State Osher Lifelong Learning Institute where folks get to take classes to Chico State, uh, ranging from painting to learning how to do your taxes and actually to also bird birding and learning how to ID birds with which Joyce has done um, a few times and led bird walks. But anyway, um, again, we welcome everybody. Althikal Audubon is gonna do Zoom for a while. Uh, we were hoping to have in-person program and we are actually looking at a new venue. We were also, we were kind of excited to start from Zoom program, not, excuse me, in-person programs at the Chico Library with a much bigger venue and a better parking and better lighting. But uh, because of the resurgence of COVID and the Delta variant, we're going to keep Zooming it for a while and um, we're actually getting a little better at Zoom programs. I know I'm a little rusty, we haven't done this since last May, but anyway, um, I will make a few announcements and introduce Joyce. But meanwhile, as you see what's up on your screen right now, is we're going to talk about um, the upcoming October number November field trips, and we are doing a lot of field trips. We feel they're very safe. We ask people to follow some safety guidelines, but um, if Mary would like to go ahead and Mary is our ex executive director. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm all choked up because of all that wind today. <laughs> Mary can maybe talk about some of the upcoming field trips that we're having. Yeah, um, we got a pretty loaded schedule for October and November. And we have no, it all. We can't here. hear you. I know I can't. You can't? I'm not muted. Can you I hear me? I can hear you fine. Oh, OK. Um, yeah, we have a whole bunch of field trips for October and November. You can see them all here on the screen. And you can find them on our website. So um, if you forget, you can just check the website, which has the newsletters in it. And this will come out in the next newsletter. And it also will have the calendar. You can go to the cal events calendar and you can find them there. So lots of places to find where the trips are. And uh, we have a new field trip chair, Karen Smith, just joined our board of directors as the um, field trip chair. So she'll be taking over a lot of those duties that I've been filling in for since we haven't had one in so long. So hope you guys join us on some of the field trips. Great, thank you, Mary. Uh, a couple of other little announcements before we get to our great program tonight about the birds and wildflowers of deep meadows. Um, before we do start the program, uh, please we put in your sightings and put in your questions or comments in chat. And then after the program, after Joyce finishes the program, um, we'll have Joyce look over the questions and answer them for you. We're also always excited to hear about the sightings that are happening. And also we ask most of you or all of you, except Joyce, to mute your auto so that we don't have any background noise. And also, um, really quick, I know that we chatted before we started the Zoom program, but right now it's amazing migration going on. Um, we have seen the last few weeks 
lots of yellow warblers coming through Chico and a lot of the restoration sites along the rivers. I know in my backyard, I just had a yellow warbler yesterday. We've seen um, orange crown warblers coming through. And actually over the weekend, I had a black throated gray warbler in my uh, oak tree. And so um, just to let everyone know that, just keep an eye out. They're really moving through in big numbers right now. Some of these incredible, beautiful yellow warblers are just stunning. You can't miss them. <laughs> so um, let's see. I had a Magdala breeze in my yard a couple days ago or a few days ago. And this actually started over two weeks ago. So we thought, oh, the warbler migration is done, but it's still it's full on. So yeah, just keep looking in the trees. I know I was just walking in Vigil Park yesterday and saw some orange crown warblers. Um, Another thing we're kind of excited about, and I know I'm kind of uh, making this move forward to Altical Audubon had gotten some trust money from Elizabeth Brown and her, one of her key things that she wanted the money to go to were scholarships. So we are now setting up a fund through North Valley Community Foundation for scholarships for high school, for college, and we're gonna offer camperships for youth and youth Glen and Tehama County. So we're kind of excited about this. It's exciting news, setting up this fund, and it's going to be uh, up and running on North Valley Community Foundation site soon. And uh, by uh, late winter, early spring, we'll be asking um, to, uh, youth and high school and college students to apply. So. Something kind of exciting the news. Alta Cal is getting into making scholarships happen for youth and um, you know high school and seniors. So anyway, um, so why don't we go ahead and get to our program? Joyce Pond is going to present tonight. Her and Lorraine um, did a wonderful job on the PowerPoint about the birds and wildflowers of these meadows, and luckily. <laughs> Beginning of June, there was quite a number of us that went up there before the fire with Joyce and Lorraine and uh, saw this uh, beautiful area where there are tons of birds and lots of uh, wildflowers. But tonight we're going to have Joyce present to you this incredible uh, PowerPoint. And take it on, Joyce. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> So the, all right. There it goes. Okay, so the background, hopefully everybody can hear me okay here. Um, the background of this is that Lorraine and I were going to take a field trip up there for Ollie and all of a sudden COVID hit and the lockdown. So all, the Ollie office asked if there was anything we could do to still hold our class. And so that's when we put together this PowerPoint. So anyway, this, this first picture on this opening slide is a snow plant with an Anna's hummingbird and a Western swallowtail butterfly that Lorraine got to lucky enough to take. <laughs> oh, and also Lorraine isn't able to join us tonight. So, but she contributed a lot to putting together the, especially the botany parts of this so anyway, uh, this was initially meant to be a travelogue and I, we had video clips and showed people how to get to each destination and I kind of revamped it for Aldecal. So I, um, but that's why you see this map with the directions and stuff like that. So the first stop is the bridge over Butte Creek. And a lot of you are familiar with this because you've been up there. That's where we can stop and look up and down the stream and try to see an American Dipper. And the dippers are typically seen perched on a distant rock. A lot of times they're further away than in this photo. You just see a little black dark spot or you can see them on the edge of the creek. And an interesting fact I found is that they catch all their food underwater and swiftly flowing streams by swimming and walking on the stream bottom. 
So they don't just like to go in the water, they're actually catching their food. And under the bridge, there's often a nest built by the dippers. And the picture is kind of blurry on the left, but I was just really excited. I saw the parent come to feed the chick and I had like one second to focus and I didn't quite make it. But in late May or early June, you might see chicks in the nest there. And then the plants include something called Darmera or umbrella plant. And it can be found growing in the creeks and streams. And it can be also seen up and downstream from the bridge. And the left picture shows one just starting to leaf out. And the right hand picture shows uh, some of the clusters of the small pink flowers and the leaves, which are colorful in the fall. And at, you can also see all kinds of nature at that spot. So take some time to look around. Like we see pileated woodpeckers there frequently. and. The dragonfly on the right is called a black petal tail. And then heading, continuing on the road from there, the next stop is at the Cherry Hill Campground. And if you park there outside the campground along the road, and there's a small trail across the street, a short trail that takes you to a bog of carnivorous pitcher plants and sundews. And, oh, they're called round leaf sundews. Anyway, so the pitcher plants are on the left. And those are a little bit past their prime. The things that are sticking up at the top there on stalks are the flowers. And the, the main part of the plant at the bottom is like pitcher shaped. And there's something in there to attract insects and the insects crawl in and then there's bristles inside pointing downward so the insects can't get back out. And then the plant digests the insects. And the sundews are sort of like Venus flytraps. They have these little paddle shaped things that stick out with little hairs on them. And if a bug lands on it, it closes up on the bug and then digests it. And also at that site, you can see some nice birds. We saw the Western tanager in a tree right next to the bog. And there's snow plants along the trails and roads there. And we've seen flycatchers and um, other, and warblers, other types of birds flying around there. And back at the Cherry Hill campground where we left our cars, you can see a lot of butterflies like the California tortoise shell and the morning cloak. And then continuing further along the road until we get to the Jonesville snowmobile parking area and the Colby Meadows Trail. Oh, and I forgot to mention at the end of this slideshow, um, a friend of mine went up there yesterday and took pictures and showed me told me the condition of like after the fire went through and what's okay and what burned. So I added some slides at the end and I'll go through that with you guys and show you um, exactly what's going on up there right now. Anyway, so back to the parking area. Um, so we're at the Jonesville parking area and um, one June we saw this white headed woodpecker feeding its chick and chicks in a nest cavity in the snag that was lit right at the edge of the parking lot. And we've seen Cassin's finches in the treetops there and we've heard them singing. They look a lot like the house finch or the purple finch, but they have that bright red crown and they're found at the higher altitudes and they don't have as much streaking as the house finch. Let me just see here. Um, okay, so on the west side of the Jonesville snowmobile parking lot, there's a trail and it goes over a small bridge. And if you look side to side in this dry area, there are numerous wildflowers. This is actually before you cross the bridge. Um, pretty face, California stick seed, there are a couple of them. And there's pussy paws and rayless ragwort, and they're abundant in dry areas. I'm just trying to see it. Oh. The problem with this chat is it actually blocks my text, so I can't read the text until I look at the chat message, sorry. So anyway, um, see here's, anyway, we're coming up to the bridge. So all of this we saw between the parking lot and the bridge. And then also right next to the bridge, um, if you look on the left, there's some wild bleeding hearts and you might find other interesting nature on the ground and in the trees around you. So be sure to look around. Hang on a sec, now this, Froze. Okay, there we go. Once you go across the bridge along Willow Creek, 
You may see, see some wildflowers that enjoy a bit lusher habitat, like the mountain streamside bluebells and the star flowered false Solomon seal. Common yarrow and parishes yampa. They look very similar, but the yarrow has long, narrow, feathery leaves, and the yampa has no or unnoticeable leaves. You may see a patch of woolly mule's ears. They have the fuzzy leaves that give them their name that look sort of like mule's ears. And larkspur, larkspur can be found all along the trail through Col Colby Meadows. And the next few slides are some birds and plants and other nature we've seen along this path. Um, if you're lucky, you might get to see these two beauties, golden crown kinglet and evening grosbeak. Those are some of Lorraine's photos. She got some pretty good ones. And you can often hear the brown creepers, but they're so well camouflaged that it can be really hard to see them. And mountain chickadees are another abundant species here. And we also saw more butterflies and moths. The comma butterfly, the one-eyed sphinx moth is a pretty cool looking moth. And we saw the tiger, a lot of tiger beetles were up there and some of them were mating. And the spider was, eat, white spider was eating a moth on this plant. So if you just observe and look closely, you can see all kinds of interesting things. And there are a lot of different species of butterflies called blue butterflies. Uh, we weren't sure which species this one was, but they're very pretty. And the one on the right is called a Clodius parnassian, and it's perched on a star-flowered false Solomon seal, and they're bleeding hearts in the background. And you might also find some interesting mushrooms and lichens. The one on the left is called a sculpted puffball, and it was about the size of a tennis ball. And then wolf lichen is pretty common up there. Some of the plants you might find along and off the trail include the wild forget-me-nots or Sierra and stick seed and the brown's peony. Yellow violets are common. <clears throat> the one on the left is called pine violet or moosehorn violet. And if you use your imagination, the leaves look similar to moosehorns. And then the goosefoot violet on the right is named because the leaves resemble goose feet. So with a variety of habitats, um, there's streamside, dry, shaded, exposed. The Colby Meadows Trail has an excellent display of wildflowers throughout June. The ones on the left are yellow or butter lupin, and the ones on the right um, are pine drops hiding behind mountain pink current. In the wet or boggy areas, you can find orchids and other weather-loving plants. Um, the one on the right is a white bog orchid, and the one on the left is Oregon bog saxifrage. And we saw them in around the pitcher plant area too, because it's very boggy. Also in wet or moist meadow areas are common camas, mariposa tulips, marsh marigolds, and many other beautiful flowers. If you walk this trail in early June and you're lucky, you might be treated to these two beauties which grow in dry exposed areas. The one on the left is Nevada Luisia or bitterroot. And the one on the right is spotted mountain bells or spotted fritillary. It's always a treat to see columbine, usually blooming in late June in forested areas. And in the meadows, you might see patches of red, uh, Rydberg's penstemon and a shrub called Utah serviceberry and more birds. We saw the song sparrow singing. That was on that little bridge uh, that's by the Colby Meadows Trail. And the blackback woodpecker um, excavating a nest hole. That was pretty exciting sighting. OK, then heading from there back on the road, we go up to Cold Springs. Much of the road is unpaved. And some years, there are deep ruts and large rocks in the road. The elevation is 6480 feet and even in June we've encountered snow on the road and had to walk the rest of the way in and some of you might recognize people in this photo. I think it's Diego on the left and Lisa Winslow on the right i'm not sure who's in the middle. But that picture was a while back <laughs> like maybe a decade ago Diego is pretty young there. 
Um, so when you park at the parking area at Colby Meadows, to the right is a trough with water from the springs that are being piped in. And the Pacific Crest Trail passes through here. Now this is interesting. The thick-billed fox sparrow is a species that's found at Cold Springs, and it's different than the one we have in Chico, where we have the sooty fox sparrow. The thick-billed has a thicker bill, and it has gray plumage, whereas the sooty is reddish brown. And they also have different songs, and I've recorded them here to play. Hold on a sec. Here's the sooty fox sparrow. Here's the sunny fox sparrow. He's going to replay. Anyway, um, and actually, let me play the green tailed toey because that kind of sounds similar to a fox sparrow. So I included this too. That was actually how we first ID'd the thick build up there because we kept hearing this bird sing and we could not pin it down because it kept moving around so much. And finally, um, since my app happened to have the thick build song, it was like singing the exact song. And then finally it did land where we got a good look at it and I got that photo. So then um, other birds we've seen here include this green, the green-tailed towhee, chipping sparrow, western tanager, olive-sided flycatcher, mountain quail, and a variety of warblers and woodpeckers. If you follow the path beyond the trough, you'll come to an open area where it's easier to view some of these species. Oops, sorry, <laughs> there. Okay, so in the open area, look around for interesting plants as well and watch where you place your feet so you don't step on one of these unique plants, the longhorn steer head, steer's head, which is related to the bleeding hearts or a rattlesnake. Um, and the longhorn steer's head is usually seen in moist areas right after snow melt. And then from there, we headed back and then take the left fork to the Butte Creek House Ecological Reserve. The meadow is filled with beautiful wildflowers in the spring, and you'll hear and, and see birds all around you. Now, when we went up this past spring in June, it was so dry. This is normally boggy and filled with these yellow wildflowers. But it was so dry this year because of the drought that the bog was totally dried up and there were hardly any wildflowers. And there was only one little trickle of Butte Creek. It's actually the headwaters of Butte Creek up here. But anyway, the year, the year before, when we took these pictures in late May, the meadow was filled with plantain leaf, plantain leaf buttercups and the California corn lilies were just starting to leaf out. In the spring, you're likely to see nesting activity. We often see tree swallows going in and out of nest holes in these fence posts. And actually, um, this past spring, we found a warbling vireo nest. The female came to feed the babies while we were there. Well, we didn't see the babies, but we saw the, we saw the adult come and perch near the nest. So that was helpful for IDing the nest. And then we almost stepped, oh, this is the wet year again. Um, we almost stepped on this spotted sandpiper nest on the ground in the midst of the grass. We knew that's what kind of bird laid these eggs because we saw the mother nearby. So this was the end of our field trip. And when you retrace your route back to Chico, stop to look at anything interesting along the way. We stopped along the road to look at wildflowers and found a nest of baby juncos under the, a rock. And here again, the parents came to feed it. So that's how we could tell what kind of a nest it was. Um, at another spot, we saw this flock of pelicans flying overhead. Now here's the update. Butte Meadows area after the fire. It's actually more optimistic, uh, better than I expected. <laughs> so it, the Dixie fire burned through some of this area, including at Butte Creek House. However, my friends uh, who drove up this weekend reported good news. Our main burning sites did not burn. The area from Butte Meadows through Jonesville is fine. The Dipper Bridge, the Cherry Hill Campground, and the Pitcher Plant Bog all survived. 
the Jonesville snowmobilery, including the wooden bridge, that's my friend's husband there yesterday, and the trail through Colby Meadows were untouched by the fire. The entrance to Butte Creek House Ecological Reserve was burned, including the sign and the small wooden building that's called, that was called Butte Creek House and the surrounding trees. Now here's a little interesting side note. The Butte Creek House was likely the Abertine Post Office, and it was a post office that served the tree tappers who gathered pine pitch to distill and use in the patent medicine made by the Abertine Med Medical Company. It was a fourth class post office located 13 miles north of Inskip. Elizabeth G. Smith was the first postmaster, if anybody knew her, and, he, and it was discontinued as a post office in 1914 and moved to Inskip, but that little building was there all these years. We used to look in it for barn owls when we were up there on our field trips, and that's all that's left of it now. But the good news is the meadow, that was even though it was so dry and even the wooden fence posts where the swallows like to nest survived. And my friend again took these pictures there yesterday. And there was also evidence that the cow survived because she said there were a lot of fresh cow pies. <laughs> um, the road, hang on one sec. I have to close this chat window because um, so I can read my text here. <laughs> The road was blocked before they got to Cold Springs, but the burned areas were getting worse at the higher elevations, including along Humbug Summit Road. Besides the road closed signs, the far forest is also closed, so it's not good for burning trips up there yet. In fact, they passed a couple of closure signs, but the, the forest service personnel that was up there just waved and said hi to them and let them go, so that's how they got up here but it probably wouldn't be a good idea to try to lead a birding trip up there yet. However, where's my next slide here? <laughs> there were tons of Lewis's woodpeckers everywhere they stopped along the drive. She said they were in Butte Meadows, Jonesville, all along Humbug Summit Road, and they counted more than 50 of them. And they were mainly perched on the trees. Now we've been seeing a lot of flocks flying over the head down, overhead down here in Chico, especially near the washout area and probably saw hundreds of them on the weekend, but they're just flying from who knows where. But up here, she said they were all perched on the trees or drumming on the trees, like eating, feeding on the trees. And they also saw a blackback woodpecker, which we know like burned over areas. And they saw two Canada Jays, which I guess are kind of unusual here. So you might consider venturing up there in a single vehicle, being mindful of the closures and the conditions. And one other thing that they found, I just stuck in here because I had a blank spot, is a mountain lion track on the Colby Meadows um, path. The end. <laughs> so if anybody has any questions, um, let me turn, close this thing out. Oops. If anybody has questions, they can ask them now. Oops. Joy, can you see your uh, questions? Yeah, I don't see any questions. I see the certain things that people like. <laughs> Thank you for the compliments. And yeah, the, the morning cloak butterflies and the sphinx moth, they're really cool. Yeah, I have a question. So um, the burn forest, it's kind of a rebirth. So do you, if we get a pretty good wet winter spring, um, we should see some probably good wildflowers. Yeah. And I was really happy because I was, I was kind of depressed this summer because all these areas like what wild orchid areas like Butterfly Valley and, you know, caribou were getting burned too and, and Lassen. But just to see the good news, you know, that these, that so many of our favorite spots are still okay. And like you say, the burned areas will, will come back. Right. So you, uh, you, you can't get up the cold spring. So it's closed. No, she said the road was closed before they, yeah, they went as far as they could, but it was actually blocked. I mean, before that, there were some road closed signs, but they let them go through, but then it was actually blocked off. And I think it's probably because of hazards, you know, of trees falling and things like that. Yeah. They don't want people up there. So I'm not sure if that, if that'll be reopened by next spring or not. 
Yeah, our, um, you know, I'm working a lot right now in the North Complex fire area and we have trees fall like every day. We go up one day to this route and we don't have any trees in the way. And then we go up again the next day and we have trees down on the road. So you could easily get stuck somewhere if you go through and a tree falls on your route out. So yeah, really, that's true, too. Unless you have a chainsaw, you better be careful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, especially after today. Well, I was thinking too, yeah. like if somebody's hiking, you know, if somebody gets out of their car to look at a bird or something, they can get injured by a branch or a tree falling. But yeah, the road blockage too, you could get stuck. If folks want to unmute, if they want to ask a question, um, you don't have to type it. That can work too. Mm -hmm. But I, I would, I would just really uh, amazed at the wildflower shots those were beautiful shots yeah lorraine like i say took most of the wildflowers i i took a couple but she did most of that and the wildflowers will still be really good next year they come back really good after the fire yeah. as i've been seeing in the north complex fire area well, I was surprised. I mean, the firefighters did such a great job at saving those areas because I know they were fighting hard to save Jonesville and the Cherry Creek campground. Yeah, there were, there were two spots that there was like right at the edge there. So they really get some deserve some kudos. Uh, I guess now we'll wonder how Lassen Park looks. I know we had our last field trip in mid June before yeah. a month later. <laughs> The park caught on fire so yeah yeah it looked like on the map that i saw that the fire boundary didn't get to the lost creek campground that's good i saw that it hit lost creek but that was the creek and not the campground i guess right. yeah you know maybe a further down on the creek right. anybody have any other questions or comments you can unmute <laughs> <laughs> Well, Joy, thanks so much. Um, mm -hmm. Very impressive. It feels good to have good news about not all that burning down. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah uh, definitely. <laughs> yeah. And we look forward to getting up there. Hopefully this spring, they won't block off too many roads. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, heck, Colby Meadows is one of the places I go off to. So I'm so thrilled that it's still there. So um, yeah. But everyone, um, give an applause to Joyce. Yay! Thanks, Joyce. And thank you, thanks Joyce. Thanks everyone for that coming. That was really great. Yeah. yeah. Glad you enjoyed it. Yeah. And, uh, join us next couple of months. Our newsletter will come out with two more great programs. So we look forward to either seeing you at the programs or on a field trip. All right. Thanks, Jennifer. You're welcome. Thanks all for tuning in. Well, yeah, and I'm, happy, I'm, glad, I'm glad to have another usage for the slideshow too, you know, because it took so much work. It was nice oh, to be sure. yeah. Fabulous. Really Thank, good. You. Thank you, Joyce. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Joyce. Jennifer. Courages me to get out there and see some of those things. Mm -hmm. Nice. Thanks, everyone.